Before I get started with the video, if you guys could help me out by quickly hitting that like button, it literally takes a second and it really helps my channel out. I'd honestly appreciate it so much. I'm trying to get this channel back up and running, so I'd really appreciate all the support I can get. If you're new around here and you enjoy NBA content, hit that subscribe button for more videos. Videos? Hit that subscribe button for more videos. And obviously, if you want to be notified anytime I upload a new video, hit that notification button. With that said, let's get started with the video. The Los Angeles Lakers have been major winners in this 2021 offseason. They've managed to improve their roster after winning an NBA championship in the 2020 NBA season. And whilst it was a strange season because of the pandemic, the Los Angeles Lakers were always seen as front runners to win the NBA championship from the beginning of the season and even through the pandemic. Sure, there was other teams that involved the Clippers, and in the East, the Bucks, and potentially the Celtics. But really, it was out of the Bucks in the Eastern Conference, and the Lakers or the Clippers in the Western Conference. Those were the teams that most people expected to win the NBA championship. And we saw some surprises, particularly in the Eastern Conference, with the Miami Heat advancing to the NBA Finals. Unfortunately, they had injuries, and they weren't as competitive in the NBA Finals. We also saw in the Western Conference some surprises with the Clippers not making it to the Western Conference Finals, and the Denver Nuggets coming back from three games to one on multiple multiple occasions which hadn't ever been done before, so overall it was a weird season. But nevertheless, the Lakers achieved the outcome that many expected they would achieve going into the season. They won the NBA championship. Anthony Davis and LeBron James turned out to be the duo that we all expected and they were able to lead this team to an NBA championship without any real third option. They had some solid players in Morris, Dwight Howard, Rajan Rondo, Carl Kuzma, but it was really their firepower in Anthony Davis and LeBron James that got the NBA championship for season 2020. Now we are moving on to a new season, a new time, and a new Los Angeles Lakers squad, with new acquisitions in Dennis Schroeder, Montres Harrell, and of course Wesley Matthews. They are replacing guys like Danny Green, Rajan Rondo, Dwight Howard, and then there are a few other outs for the Los Angeles Lakers that have either been waived or have been let go by the team, such as Avery Bradley, Quinn Cook, Dion Waiters, and J.R. Smith. Most of those guys didn't actually have an impact during the NBA Finals. Avery Bradley didn't actually play in the bubble. Quinn Cook wasn't really a part of the rotation, and neither was J.R. Smith or Dion Waiters. The real losses come from Dwight Howard and Rajan Rondo, two veteran players that really gave their career a lifeline. Both players were seemingly in and out of teams in the past couple of seasons. Dwight Howard could not find a home, and neither could Rajan Rondo, but they were great veterans for this Lakers team, and they really meshed well during the NBA playoffs, and of course they were valuable pieces for an NBA championship team, especially Rajan Rondo, and during the season, Dwight Howard, with his extreme career turnaround, which was amazing to see. But the Lakers now are looking a lot better. They've replaced Danny Green, who was really inefficient during this season and had a very down year, not even on the offensive end. Of course, his offensive shooting was not great at all, but even his defense, which Danny Green is known for being a really great defender, especially in San Antonio, and of course, when he won his championship with Kawhi Leonard in Toronto, Danny Green, if he wasn't shooting well, at least he was a very, very good defender. Last season though, he wasn't the Danny Green that was worth $15 million a season and he wasn't playing like a third option which the Lakers signed him up for. Which is why acquiring Wesley Matthews on a far cheaper contract and an even better shooter and a better defender makes this Lakers signing incredible. He's a guy that you want on your team and he's also a great veteran player to have as he's getting older but he's also still hungry for that NBA championship. And then of course the two big names that the Los Angeles Lakers have acquired. The big question for the Los Angeles Lakers was who would be that third option? Now they have two players that play their role exceptionally well and can either be starters or great six men. Montres Harrell was the sixth man of the year last year and Dennis Schroeder came second in the award. So both players know how to play their roles either off the bench or on the starting lineup. And Dennis Schroeder brings so many great things to this Lakers team. He's an isolation threat, which gives the Lakers a great player to have on the offensive end, either off the bench or on the starting lineup, which I think he would probably be the starter for this team. He's also a really good defender and a player that's willing to dive on the ball and is really gritty, which the Lakers really liked in Rajan Rondo and I think they're going to love with Dennis Schroeder, who's also much younger. 
In addition, Dennis Schroeder is a really good three-point shooter, which is a lot better than what they had with Rajan Rondo and any of their other playmakers in the Lakers offense. Obviously, LeBron James is an incredible playmaker, but to have a guy like Dennis Schroeder, no doubt helps his Los Angeles Lakers team. And of course, Harrell. Harrell is such a grit and grind player, a player that the Clippers loved, and now he's not a part of that Los Angeles Clippers. Patrick Beverly obviously wasn't happy with this, and with that Lakers and Clippers rivalry, it's really interesting to see him, I guess, join the dark side according to Clippers fans, but Lakers fans now have to love this man. He goes after every loose ball, and it's going to be really interesting to see how he matches up with LeBron James and Anthony Davis if he plays in the same starting lineup as them, or if he comes off the bench, which I think will be most expected out of the sixth man of the year. He plays that role so well, and you can just see Dennis Schroeder and Montrezl Harrell playing off together, similar to Lou Williams and Montrezl Harrell the way they played together. And it also addresses one of the big problems the Lakers had last year, which was basically just bench production. Who would be the guy to come off the bench and be able to score for this team? Kuzma was there, Danny Green was there, Cadwell Pope was there, but no one was seen as an extreme scorer. That was the role of Kyle Kuzma when he was able to come off the bench, but it was just random. Nobody knew who would be the third scorer for this team or a player that would come off the bench to score. The Clippers though, they had Lou Will and Harrell and you knew that they would be able to score buckets because Lou Will is a great scorer but he's also able to feed Harrell the ball and that's exactly what they'll be on the Lakers with Dennis Schroeder potentially playing with Harrell like a Lou and Harrell type role for the Los Angeles Lakers and they still have Carl Kuzma and Morris who looks like he'll resign in addition to guys like KCP and that's enough, I think, for the Lakers to address their scoring problems off the bench, whilst also having the firepower in the starting lineup with LeBron James and Anthony Davis, which is actually really scary. In addition, Anthony Davis really loves playing at that four position. So if they want a great shooting lineup, they can have Dennis Schroeder, Wesley Matthews, Kyle Kuzma, or potentially Morris, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. If they want a really great tall ball defensive lineup, they can run LeBron at the one, Matthews at the two, Morris if they re-sign him at the three, Davis and Harrell. No team is going to be able to score against that lineup. And even if they decide to go fast and small, they've got Dennis Schroeder, Wesley Matthews, LeBron James, even though he's old, he's still extremely athletic and fast. And even Harrell, he's another guy who's not incredibly tall at six foot eight, but the way he plays, he can run multiple positions, either at the four or the five, just because he's simply so versatile. This Lakers team has gotten even better during the 2021 offseason. I want to hear what you think down below. So yeah, let me know how you think the Los Angeles Lakers have gone this offseason. I obviously see it as a massive win. I'll probably make a complete winners and losers of this year's offseason, but the Lakers definitely, they've done incredible in my opinion. They've obviously got a lot of room, not in terms of cap space, but they've got a lot of room to still make a trade. Carl Kuzma could potentially be on the block. They could even trade away Harrell if he isn't producing what the Lakers want, if he's not the correct fit for this team because of his contract and if you combine Kuzma's and Harrell's together, they can potentially get another third option. I'm not sure what the Lakers are going to do, but what they've done so far is really interesting, so I'm excited to see how they play next year. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll catch you guys in my next one. It's been your boy Nick Smith, I am out, peace.